Okay, so this is how we make our killer damsel. Okay, a few touching turns to start off with. Now, this fly, I saw Hugh Morgan make this on one of his TV shows. And I added a little few things of my own variation on a theme. I'm going to make an olive one today. So, first thing I need is a dumbbell. So, we've got these little brass dumbbells. I know you can see that there. Little brass dumbbells. This one's a 4mm dumbbell. Tie that on first. Just turn the hook upside down. We'll tie that on. Yeah, Hugh Morgan made this and I saw it and thought, well, that's a good fly. And he said, this is the first fly he used whenever he goes to a still water. So I started to do the same. Now, since then, this fly has caught me more fish than any other fly. I, it's unbelievable. I have a variation of, uh, of different uh, colours in this. This one's going to be an olive one. So I'll tie on the dumbbell there. Connecting turns all the way down. Again, using olive thread. Now, a bit of olive marabou. Tear some off. Now, I like to wet this just here, just to trim it. Makes it a little bit easier to trim and cut. Trim that off. And we can tie that on. Pinch that there through my fingers and pull that tight that ties it on nicely now I'm no fly tying expert my flies look like they've been stood on and walked all over which apparently is a good thing for flies people say that those flies that catch more fish are the ones that are sat at the bottom of the box your fly box all tatty and horrible uh, if you tie a lovely fly, they reckon the first thing you should do is once you've tied a beautiful looking fly is take it out and stand on it. I don't need to do that with my flies, they already look like that. So, a bit of crystal flash next. Once we've tied the marabou on, I'm just going to fold that over a few times. And then tuck that underneath the thread there. Missed. Swing and a miss. Sorry, for those that can hear in the background, that's my my wife's dog pining for food again. He ever seems to do. Okay, once we've tied that on a couple of times, send it over the edge and tie it on again. Okay, now I like to put a little tiny bit of copper wire on my, just to hold on our dubbing a little bit. So I'll just cut a little tiny bit of that, a couple of inches, tie that in. there like so and if anybody's any good at time flies and would like to give me a bit of advice after watching this always open to advice every day is a school day always got something to learn okay now I'll put that up there so I don't forget to deal with it Okay, but a dubbing. So I use a bit of dubbing wax. This is BT's dubbing wax. There it is there. It looks like a Pritt stick. It's great, this stuff. Just helps hold the dubbing on a little bit. Find a bit of olive. Tiny bit of green there. I haven't got much of that left. I'm going to have to buy some more of that. Stick that on. Okay, twist that on. Just make sure it goes on. Just give it a little twist each time. Make sure that sticks. Let's get the rest of the scubbins out of the way. Okay, so it gets a bit fluffy there. And then I can take my wire, send that round. It just helps hold it in place. It just gives it a little bit of a body. Quite like that. So Hugh Morgan's Killer Damsel is slightly different than this. What I did is I added a tiny bit of fritz to mine. So I'll get a little tiny bit of red fritz if I can find the end of it. Now this gives the fish a little bit of a target at the end of your, your damsel. 
I'll just tie that on. Send that to the end. And then, a few twists around there. I use red, use dark green, I've even used white, I've even used some orange as well. You know, uh, red and black goes nicely. Olive and red just seems to be the one though that really just gets them going. And then just some finishing turns there. Just holding that hook in place, you can see I'm just building up a tiny bit of a body there at the, 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 the head. That looks nice, and then we tie it off. Now I've got one of these little tying things, but I'm not very good with it. I have to do it one at a time. My friend uses his fingers, and he just—I don't know what—I don't know how he does it. He just turns and twists his fingers round and round and round, and I haven't got a clue how he does it. I know other people take these things and just do this with it and, and tie it off. Um, I, if anybody can explain to me, I have looked on YouTube and I have seen how it's done, and I still can't do it. But whatever works for you. I'm not being funny. I have five trophies that I've won with this fly that I tied myself using this technique. Proof's in the pudding, people. The proof is in the pudding. I enjoy what I do. I don't care if I'm good at it or not. Okay, so... When I find my pokey stick, there it is there. Just put a tiny bit of varnish on. This is clear varnish, just at the end, just to finish it off there. Keeps that knot in place. Nearly finished. I just want to trim the crystal flash. Now, if you just hold it like this and run your scissors up and down it, you get uneven cuts. So it doesn't look, it doesn't look trimmed. It looks tatty and it looks grotty and it looks like it's been walked all over already and that's a killer damsel which will catch fish rock and roll any questions hands up oh.